Welcome back to this special TEC TV production on Operation Deep Freeze. For over 20 years, the Air National Guard has supported the National Science Foundation by transporting cargo and passengers throughout the continent. And today, even after 20 years, the biggest challenge to operating in that environment remains the same. Ask anyone in Antarctica what the biggest challenge to working and living here is, and they will all say the same thing. It's the weather. Or the weather. Weather. And the weather. This weather. The weather. The weather. Never know what the weather's going to be like. The reason why they say that is because, uh, number one, weather does have such a profound impact on the operations here. Antarctica is the coldest, driest, and windiest continent on Earth, and many would argue the weather changes the quickest. In just 15 minutes, the weather can go from this to this. At the beginning of the deep freeze season, the Joint Task Force and the National Science Foundation come to an agreement on the number of flights and the amount of cargo the Air Force will deliver to science outposts. But that doesn't account for the weather. We can't control what the weather does and what uh, happens with the airplanes, so you end up with a backlog. So at different times of the year, you could end up uh, really pushing the schedule to make sure that you get the, uh, the missions complete or you start pushing uh, to add lines to the, to the, uh, to the mission because you need to get some people out of camps, you need to get supplies to them and uh, to meet the, uh, the agreement that we have with the NSF. The job of predicting the changing weather falls to Rolf Hennig. He has to prepare the pilots and air crews for the weather conditions that will shift dramatically throughout the day. To do this, he and his small staff have to constantly monitor the weather on pretty much the entire continent, and they have to do it with very little support. If you look at the continent, the continental United States, there are thousands and thousands of weather reporting uh, locations across the continent or across the United States, and they can make very developed models of what the weather systems are doing, and they can forecast well in advance, and you have a, you have, you have a very good idea of what's going to happen. But on the continent of Antarctica, which is bigger than the continental United States and Mexico combined, it's a very big continent, there, there is only about 50 weather reporting stations automated or manned across the whole continent. So it's very difficult to have a, a good weather picture of what's going on on the continent, the surface and at higher altitude. If the weather does change rapidly during an LC-130 mission, the air crew may not be able to make it back to McMurdo. This means they would have to divert the mission and land elsewhere. They then would have to wait out the weather on the ground, and it's up to Staff Sergeant Sarah Chambers to make sure they can survive. Our stuff is there to sustain them, to get them home safely, get them back to their families. As an aircrew flight equipment specialist, Staff Sergeant Chambers is responsible for ensuring the aircrew has what they need to survive. She provides a number of different kits that are loaded on every aircraft and used in case of emergency. The kits have tools the aircrew can use to build a shelter, to stay clean and to sleep comfortably, and she gets to inspect and prepare it all. Yak tracks, anything they can possibly, you know, use extra. 550 cord, um, water, water storage, you know, shovels, ice saws, tarps, all sorts of equipment within one kit. In multiple locations, they can have lots of equipment to survive off of. So, I mean, we plan for every situation, and that's pretty much what our job is, is to make sure that in any situation, they're ready to survive. Believe it or not, the weather can also get too warm in Antarctica. During the summer months, the temperatures at McMurdo Station often rise above freezing which creates a whole new problem along the ice runway. The sun actually melts the top layer of snow on the ice and it turns it into about a two feet of slush. So the vehicles, even though they have uh, special tires on them, they sink in and they leave ruts on the ramp and they leave ruts on the roads. Each night we pray that it gets a little colder with some cloud cover and it'll stiffen up enough to where we can get our planes on there and they don't, they don't dig in too much and leave it three, four foot ruts. The airmen continue to succeed in this environment, even with the weather challenges, both too cold and too warm. And it's good that they do, because science in Antarctica cannot succeed without their support. They're totally dependent upon outside support for all those missions on the Antarctic. Uh, so our ability to, to supply that, uh, and fuel being the largest one, 
it's a huge challenge, but again, our young men and women are out there thinking of new ways and better ways to do things, and they're doing a fantastic job. And that's it for this special TEC TV production on Operation Deep Freeze. I'm Master Sergeant Lee Hoover. Thanks for watching.